Stop the coup. We open WBAI. Stop the coup. We open WBAI. Um, and it's threatening the viability of Pacifica and force, may force it into bankruptcy, which is, we believe, what may be possibly one of the purposes of the action. Why would you shut down WBAI in the middle of a fund drive and also in the middle of elections that are taking place for uh, local station board members? So this is a serious issue. The majority of the board have uh, voted to overturn the closure of WBAI, and unfortunately, the, uh, uh, the, this minority faction of uh, Pacifica is now uh, going to federal court to try to prevent uh, the majority really uh, having any say in what's going on. And also, uh, one of the issues is, is union busting, because they, in order to uh, shut it down, they ignore the contract, uh, which requires a four-week four notice before you lay off everyone. It was an after-sack contract, which is further damaged to Pacifica because you have to pay extra money for violating the contract. And we call on the CWA here, which represents these workers here, to oppose this kind of tactic. If they can do it in WBAI, they would do it here if they can get away with that. And we also understand they've hired a non-union attorney in negotiations with the CWA, and we're saying that that has to stop as well. Why should we be paying a high-priced union-busted attorney to negotiate with the staff here? So these are some of the issues we're raising. And uh, our first speaker is a Pacifica National Board member representing KPFA uh, from the local station board, Tom Voorhees. And I want to, before I introduce him, I want to say that uh, the faction here, this minority faction, is uh, their lawyer, um, their resident lawyer on the board filed a suit to prevent Tom Voorhees uh, from being a Pacifica board member because they manipulated an election to prevent him from being a board member. The Pacifica board overturned that election and put him in. Uh, and uh, they spent, we, KPFA and Pacifica, spent over $60,000 on a lawyer fighting a, a basically what I call a nuisance lawsuit. Uh, to prevent uh, Tom Voorhees from being on the board. And now there's an effort um, on October 26th in a special meeting to remove him from the board. Uh, so they have a pro, uh, uh, I guess, pro bankruptcy group on who say that we should go bankrupt. And uh, that is their plan. So, well. Yeah, I, I got to be pretty quick here. I'm really tightly uh, scheduled in this trip. I normally live 900 miles north of, of here, up uh, close to the Canadian border. Uh, in any case, like what Steve just said, they've been trying to kick me off of the board because I have not gone along with KPFA's move towards pushing uh, Pacifica into bankruptcy. My name's Don McClay. I don't know if I'm elected yet, um, but I am one of the uh, Rescue Pacifica candidates for the board. And I guess what really insults me and motivates me um, is the concept that we are stewards of a public trust. This is a resource for our community bigger and beyond any single one of us. And I'm really insulted that people are putting their careers and their personal advancement and whatnot first. And I'm really stunned by the underhanded ways that the uh, inner clique, I guess you could call it, has been acting. It reminds me of something that uh, Noam Chomsky said which is when a group of people are constantly doing something claiming one motive and having a different result, that result is their true objective. We have seen them mismanage this organization time and time again, and frankly, if there ever was a time for people to resign, now is it. And if I do get elected to this board, I am going to be asking for people to resign. We need to renew this station, we need younger people involved, and we need to step away from this dynamic. This dynamic has to end. Thank you. Thank you. And one of the things that this uh, minority faction has been pushing is a restructuring of Pacifica. They want to eliminate local station board members and have a self-appointed uh, group of people running uh, Pacifica and KPFA. And actually, uh, KQED did that some years ago. Uh, they had a uh, change in their bylaws to eliminate elections, which means that at KQED, their appointed staff that are running, uh, the appointed board members who are basically corporate Corporateers, corporate people, and uh, the one labor representative, former secretary treasurer, 
the San Francisco Labor Council, Walter Johnson, was removed. So there's no labor representatives anymore on the KQED board. So our next speaker is Reva Enteen. She's a past chair of a KPFA local station board. I've been following this for a long time. I grew up listening to WBAI, and as Steve said, I was the first chair of the first KPFA local station board. And even for me, this is really confusing. What do the factions mean? Majority, minority, what's really going on? What I see is there's a coup, because a coup means that an unelected body has taken over the governments of a democratic organization. We have an elected board, and majority rules with an elected board. And if this was done outside of those doors, that's a coup. Why is there a coup? Some people might remember 1999 when it looked like they were going to sell the station out from under us. And it, part of it was the corporatization of our news. And frankly, it's gotten worse and worse and worse since 1999. And part of the corporatization of the news, as somebody was saying recently, we don't have to get donations from corporations, because apparently we don't. But if we give corporate shills, which are Demo par Democratic Party shills, the total access to the news, it's equivalent to getting corporate money. So the point is, KPFA has moved mainstream right, um, the Democratic Party through the Wellstone Democratic Club, has its fingers in the pie here and is dictating the politics of the station. And I, on some level, we need to talk about what that really means. But we can't talk about what that really means if there's a coup d'etat and they have taken over our station. We have to demand that the station remains in the hands of the listeners. And let's talk politics again at KPFA, which does not mean the Democratic Party. Thank you. Our, our next speaker is uh, Lisa Milos. Lisa is a long-term supporter and listener uh, of uh, KPFA and is a rank and file member of uh, CWA Upti UC Workers. Welcome, Lisa. I'm Lisa Milos. I'm, I'm not speaking as a representative of Upti or CWA. I'm just a rank and file member who has a, an interest as a rank and file member, a worker, and a listener of uh, independent public radio. Um, I'm also Chilean-American. And one of the things that I'm, I'm really upset about also is that I've noticed, and it's been a very noticeable change in the news department um, at KPFA, that they've been uh, more and more adopting positions that seem uh, more sponsored as if they were sponsored by the National Endowment for Democracy, um, which has destabilized uh, many countries in Latin America, um, including Venezuela, Nicaragua, and uh, did so against Chile back in 1970 to 1973 um, through different entities. Um, what, I'm, what I'm also very upset about is this complete lack of democracy. And um, as a listener, I don't want my votes to be taken away. And that's what this, this uh, faction or this group that is uh, at the Pacifica National Board trying to do, they're trying to change the bylaws to take away the rights of listeners to vote the representatives on the independent community stations throughout the country. What does this mean? Who was responsible for the Telecommunications Act? The Telecommunications Act was signed in by President Clinton. And what was the result of the Telecommunications Act? The result was conglomeration of media stations, which we see now what's going on in, around the country. Who has most of the control of the media station? Private companies and the right wing in this country has the major control, which is driving the political discourse. So we sorely need a community radio station that defends our interests with our voices. We cannot afford to have the Democratic Party or anyone being in control of our voice. We need to keep our vote, we need to keep our, our voice, and we need to fight this corporatiza corporatization. And we have to continue fighting. And we're going to support Tom Voorhees and in whatever way we can to be able to make sure that he doesn't get taken off the board. And I agree with uh, Don McClay. We need to start uh, having some, uh, some people resign because the way that they behaved is completely against the bylaws. They, um, they voted. They didn't even bring, the, bring it to a vote. When they showed up at WBAI, they didn't even bring it to the vote. They destroyed equipment. They destroyed, they basically un disconnected the computers, and they have literally disenfranchised the thousands of listeners from New York City, the local listeners from New York City who have contributed and, and, uh, to, to WBAI in the middle of a fund drive. This is 
unacceptable, and we need to call, that, call it out. I'm a CWA member, and I hope also that my union defends the Labor Community Alliance. We cannot just be looking at, at, at the members of labor as staff. We have to look at unpaid staff also because, because KPFA and Pacifica runs with more, more than two-thirds of unpaid staff. Unpaid staff are people who contributed their time, their energy, their years of service to providing fantastic type of programming and diverse program. We cannot let that go. And CWA has to think about community and labor alliance. That's what this means. So our next speaker is James McFadden. Uh, he is a member of the local station board and he's been raising serious questions including the budget. James McFadden, I'm a new member of the local station board and I've been really shocked by the uh, tactics that have been employed over the last couple of months um, in an attempt to disrupt an election cycle at KPFA and to remove people from the national board. The tactics, you know, began with a uh, uh, a petition drive in the middle of an election using the petition, uh, using the election email list to subvert the election basically by uh, looking at, uh, by, by asking people to support a change of the bylaws that would remove public participation in the network. And it was a, it was a real sad beginning to an election cycle to see this happening. And then this was followed by an attempt to uh, uh, call a meeting. We had a meeting uh, uh, scheduled ahead of time. And one of the meetings all of a sudden appeared out of nowhere that we had not even voted on. You know, and how this happened, we weren't really quite sure. And, uh, and uh, so I questioned, you know, how did this meeting come about? Was sent meeting minutes that showed that, that there had been a vote on this meeting at the uh, during a meeting. I then went and reviewed the tapes, and there was no such vote. The meeting minutes had been falsified, and that was a really another kind of shock in, into the tactics. And what, what that meeting was being called for, we're not sure. But I, but shortly after that, there was an attempt. Uh, uh, there was a call for another meeting to try to remove Tom Voorhees from the uh, uh, from the national uh, uh, board. And that also, you know, following in, in on the steps of this other one, just seemed very fishy. During this whole period, we're not getting any information about budgets. You know, I've been on the board now for six months, more than that, eight months, and we're not getting the information that we need. We're really being treated like mushrooms. And it's, 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 it's really a sad situation. So then on top of all that, we get a uh, call for a... Uh, we, we get a call in here that a group has gone in and shut down uh, the New York uh, station and removed computers, removed equipment, and fired all of the staff. This was done without any authorization by the national board. The, the executive director, the interim executive director did this. This interim executive director how did he get there? There was a, um, we had an executive director that I'd met just uh, several months ago and I was thinking this guy seems like somebody we can work with. A week later he was fired. We never really found out exactly why he was fired. Another direct, interim director was appointed and then she was canned uh, uh, about a month later. And then this, this person was the third one. So we, and we still haven't met him. You know, he's not showed up here and met uh, the local station board. So he shuts down the uh, New York office and we're wondering what's going on. Um, he did this without the national board authorization. So the national board calls a meeting to retroactively uh, 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 authorize this. And what do they do? They shut down the microphones of uh, people who are going to vote against the authorization. So the 22 people, four people are removed from being able to vote on this thing. And the faction that, that, that basically sponsored that shutdown of the New York station uh, won that vote. Uh, even though there were 12 members uh, that would have voted against that authorization. It's, it's now in the courts and it's really just a sad time for KPFA. The tactics being used, keeping us in the dark, doing this kind of planning and plotting outside of the uh, uh, 
out of the open in, a, in an organization that's really supposed to be a public corporation and a beacon for how to run something outside the standard for-profit model is, is really sad. And uh, I just hope that the public uh, gets involved, that we uh, reverse the situation, and that the public kind of wakes up and goes, we have to, we have to hold on to KPFA because it's going to be essential in the future from fighting uh, 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 the various factions at, at the higher levels of our government. We need a, 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 a voice of of uh, reason, a uh, voice from the left, and KPFA could be that. If this faction is allowed to take over, then it, KPFA will just become another mouthpiece for the Democratic Party, and that's just unacceptable. Reopen WBAI, stop the coup. Reopen WBAI, stop the coup.